అందరికీ నమస్కారం అండి టుడే ఈజ్ మై రియలీ రియలీ అ స్వీట్ డార్లింగ్ అండ్ ఐ ఐ షుడ్ సే దట్ షీ ఈస్ అ గ్రేట్ వారియర్ బట్ ఇండియన్ ఫిల్మ్ యాక్ట్రెస్ అండ్ ఫిలాంత్రఫెస్ట్ అండ్ హంసా నందిని గారు ఈజ్ విత్ అస్ రైట్ నౌ ముందైతే వెల్కమ్ చెప్పేద్దాం నమస్తే అండి నమస్తే డార్లింగ్ సో హ్యాపీ టు సీ యూ లైక్ దిస్ ఇంత హ్యాపీగా చక్కగా నవ్వుతూ విత్ హెయిర్ విత్ హెయిర్ ఎస్ Yeah. yeah actually ekkadu naru from last uh, so many years um it's uh, it's been a what do i say a roller coaster ride for me for the last two years mm. since my diagnosis happened which was in the i think 2021 july mm. that's when my diagnosis happened and um yeah i had i had actually started shooting at that time for a film here and that was post the um lockdown Mm. okay and we were just coming out of covid and it was you know the phase 2 was done and all of that but um yeah that's when the diagnosis happened so it was a really mm. uh what do you say a, a wrong timing because you know two years of covid and then this so it's been a huge break actually kaisa pata chala aapko doubt kaisa aaya tha aapko um any I, symptoms like there are no symptoms okay i had no symptoms mm. i was absolutely fit i was coming here and i was shooting mm. i was shooting um day and night and i was doing absolutely fine and um i felt the lump i felt a lump mm. in my breast you have checked your self yeah this was a self examination that i did mm. on myself and i felt a lump and it was very tiny very tiny but i within 2 hours of feeling the lump i was at a radiologist i got my mammogram done and uh, the mammogram confirmed all my fears i was diagnosed with uh, grade 3 invasive carcinoma mm. and then immediately i was put into for a surgery even mom also faced the same uh, problem in this family actually it's a hereditary right so i didn't know it was hereditary okay and um, i lost my mom when i was 17 and at that time um it was just it just comes as a shock to anybody right if there is and we didn't have any family history at all like both my grandmothers turned 90 my you know my mom's sister everybody everybody is you know fine mm. but my mom uh, got diagnosed she also did a self test at that time so she was aware and she did that self test and 17 years ago i'm talking about and she felt the lump and she at that time i don't think the um the the science or the medical side of things were that uh, much better than what it is today and we couldn't help and we couldn't save her we lost her in two years just i want to know more about your family My what about family? the family oh my god father. okay you know so i'm the only daughter mm. i come from a a very middle class uh normal maharashtrian family okay okay i'm a maharashtrian girl and um i my grandfather um was a army officer mm. so defense background hai and you know we come from that my dad although um you know ventured into his own business mm. and my mom she had her own uh, business too she was uh, she had two boutiques okay. which she used to handle yeah okay okay actually your original name is punam original name is punam yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have a graduate a commerce graduate right yes i am a commerce graduate the, so आपका फैमिली में तो कोई भी फिल्म इंडस्ट्री में नहीं है दूर दूर तक नहीं है नॉट इवन लाइक रिमोटली एनीथिंग टू डू विद द फिल्म इंडस्ट्री एंड आई वाज आई एम द फर्स्ट वन आई एम आई वाज द वन टू टेक दिस ह्यूज प्लंज इनटू द ग्लैमर वर्ल्ड एंड एट अ वेरी यंग एज बिकॉज़ आई वाज ओनली 17 और 18 व्हेन आई डिड माय डेब्यू फिल्म एम एंड So yeah I mean it is it's um, you know for somebody who is coming from a marathi you know family or uh, nothing but army family and an army family and then you suddenly you know you venture into the glamour world it's uh, 
yeah and and that's what makes me you know think anjali how fearless i was mm. to just take this massive jump into a career which i had absolutely no clue of and uh, just go for it all by myself and do it you know it's, it's we have those you know teenage times where we are fearless we that was your own much. decision actually of course it was my own decision and i wasn't um, i had full family support mm. when i uh, when i realized that um, uh, you know i'm really comfortable in front of the camera and i love it and it comes very naturally to me just being in front of the camera and you know i used to get way too many offers so i was like if people are offering me so many films and so many shoots and they want me to come for like you know beauty pageants and things like that there must be something that they're seeing in me true <laughs> you know so I, there must be something that is coming naturally which is you know where i'm not going for it but they're just you know coming and offering me so i did venture out into it and then when i signed my film i realized uh, okay ye to naturally aa raha hai i'm not i have not gone and you know done any kind of uh courses or any workshops or anything in acting but it was and dancing and all of that so of course you have your family support mm-hmm. agar koi bhi ladki agar tall hai to if she is so beautiful everyone will ask the same question uh film industry pe jaoge kya heroine banoge kya aap bhi waise aayi kya um because of your height and your glamour and you are so beautiful and i don't think it has got to do with height and glamour only okay, okay? it has got it's uh, it takes a lot more than uh, you know just looks okay or the physical aspect it takes a lot more a lot lot more and i trust me i um i have huge respect for um actors okay i know what it takes to especially the ones who are not industry kids okay especially the outsiders the non nepo kids <laughs> I mean, come on okay i have to give us that credit we it's it's uh, it's a big deal to even get a right kind of meeting for us okay it's a big deal for us to get that audition forget cracking that audition even to get a call for that audition we have lived half of our dream hmm you know your debut film was uh, anumanaspada anumanaspada yes it was fantastic super duper hit it was so how you got the opportunity so at that time um i had done a lot of um, fashion shoots here which was uh, to do with some uh, jewelry and sari brands which are very very famous here in okay. hyderabad okay. but i didn't know that they were such big brands here because i did the shoots in mumbai and the holdings were put up here in hyderabad yeah. so i used to get a lot of offers mm. and um, i used to constantly get calls from you when know, i have called for the yeah <laughs> you had i have called for the purpose only no <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah so no I, but i'm talking but it's about very long time. back i said 2 yeah. years back what yeah. i'm saying oh yeah you been you sh- yes should... you have been yeah <laughs> actually following me for 2 years since for an interview or maybe more yeah, yeah. i know no but uh, so that time it was the hoardings were put up here and i was a known face like a model who was you know but i didn't know that and uh, when i got these offers i just heard this whole script and i i was like nahi karna hai because i don't i don't know anything about acting i don't even know where the cameras are what am i supposed to do and i had this conversation with my dad and my dad was like see if they like you and if you think that you know it's it's going to give you a completely different exposure which you don't have how will you know whether you like it or not just give it a shot and i'm there whatever it is if you don't if you want to discontinue after that it's okay and he was like and i was like but are you going to be there with me and he was like yes i'll be there with you and he actually was there with me in a forest for almost 70 to 80 days that we shot that film oh okay yeah it was 70 to 80 days okay. that we shot that film and uh, there was no electricity forget mobile range Oh uh, they they were just mobile phones back then and there were no 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 signal nothing no electricity i stayed in a in a school in a village mm. they made a room for me and i i stayed like that okay <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yeah. oh my god <laughs> and like three schedules we shot it in three four schedules but 
yeah, it was crazy. And now I look back and I was like, my God, I also got di- uh, over there. I felt sick. I got chicken gunia and they wanted to admit me. And I was like, no, 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 I have this. And I had lost weight and all of that. It was crazy. Okay, it was crazy. <laughs> it was and I was experience. so scared of Vamsi Garu because everybody on set was very scared of him. Okay, so everybody had told me like, you know, he's such a senior director and he's this and he's that and all that. So I wanted to be like, and it was, Telugu was Greek and Latin. Okay, absolutely. <laughs> and I just mugged up my dialogues and I had some good um, dialogue uh, team and diction and all and somehow managed. Actually, in this journey, um, as a survivor, who has supported by that time? Are you talking about my diagnosis and my, okay. So, um, you know, Anjali, the thing is, I have all the support, okay. My family. Really? 100%. Okay. Okay, my family, I have, I mean, I have amazing friends and family, okay. They, they are my backbone and um, I point in that direction and they are there for me, okay. It's like that. That's nice. But uh, when I was, um, when I got to know that this is, grade three invasive carcinoma and this is my diagnosis it's difficult okay it's it's a dark dark time that you go through and the thing is um i decided not to tell anyone in my family okay i didn't want the seniors in my family to get involved because you know there is a little bit of trauma attached to it because not little bit it's a huge trauma Ah. attached because i've lost my mom to it so I wanted to keep it away uh, till I knew what exactly where uh, I was, you know, medically, what was the stand. Uh, because all the reports, all those things, till you don't know, it's a, it's a, it's a very, uh, nobody should go through it. It's a very hard and very difficult time. We have this term in cancer patients have this term in oncology called scanxiety, not anxiety, oh. but scanxiety because all the scans for the reports to come, you have to wait. And that anxiety is very, very high, right? Because it doesn't, they take time. Um, so till my first surgery, okay, which was within, within 14 days of my, I felt the lump and in 14 days I got a, um, uh, my surgery date. I did the surgery myself. Oh my God, Ghar mein bata hai nahi. I didn't tell anyone. I had a few friends, yes. Okay. I had my, um, you know, my hairdresser. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she was there with me. And I was like, I'm not going to tell my dad. I'm not going to tell anyone. Okay. Because uh, till I know the reports, until I know what the situation is, if there is any spread, if I have caught it early. This is surgery ke baad pata chalta hai because the tests are run on you. Okay. And then my surgeon, I spoke to my surgeon and said that, you know, I have not told my family. So what do you think? Mm. So he said, you know, Hamza, let's wait for the reports. Okay. After the surgery. And then if you require chemotherapy, then go ahead and you will have to tell your family. But if you don't, they were like, don't say anything. And I was like, okay, but that's just for my family side of things because I didn't want to involve them in, um, because you know, the thing is, I can handle, I, I've realized I can handle everything, but I can't handle is sympathy. Huh. I wasn't looking for pity. I wasn't looking for sympathy and there was no place for it. I thought, report after Okay, as far as think about it actually. As far as disclosing it to the media and everything, right? I mean, you know, yes, this thought comes to your mind that do you really want to disclose it? That thought does come to your mind, okay, especially when you're a public figure. And what happens is with a disease like cancer, um that C word, you know, changes a lot of things in the way the world looks at you. Okay, people don't look at you the same way anymore. True, true. Yeah, so it all changes. And it is very difficult to put up a brave face and, you know, especially for somebody like me, who is, um, 
a glamorous actress exactly you know and has and to survive in the industry it's it's about my looks my body my um you know energy levels in dancing and performing and all of that and the glam factor and the hair and everything you know so for somebody like me um it is it would have been maybe would have been easier to hide okay and but i don't know as i as i kind of came to terms with this when my diagnosis happened my first surgery happened and then i started my chemotherapy i started reading up about this disease i even though my mother had gone through it i had no uh, knowledge of it to that extent okay so i started understanding i went through research papers mm. i literally read the research papers right. on breast cancers and there are multiple types of cancers no cancer is the same mm. okay every cancer is different yes and i read that i met and spoke to tons of women who were going through the similar treatment and i also spoke to medical oncologists across the globe okay i was consulting i was talking to them just to understand what are the treatment protocols okay what is hereditary breast cancer why why is there no awareness in india that's a completely different term there is no awareness in india actually. there is absolutely no awareness in india and you know there is no it really it really really bothers me that we have trust me i have gone through this treatment i've gone through 16 cycles of chemotherapy and i've gone through three massive surgeries okay it's not a joke it's the most toxic treatment okay i mean it's a, it's an illness where more than the disease the treatment a, is exactly difficult physically mentally financially morally everything physically mentally financially morally everything is involved in here everything is at stake so it's a, it's a very difficult um uh, scenario and that's why there is a term only for this illness where they call survivor you'll not see a diabetes patient or a heart disease patient being termed as a survivor correct, correct. right so for cancers you'll always have this warriors and survivors and you know they, all these epithets attached to it um so yeah i mean when i realized that um in during my treatment that there is no point in hiding it i mean it's a lot of pressure to just hide and just not you know be able to be out there because when i was going through it i wanted a role model i had none i had none in the industry i had no um actress to look up to or a public figure per se to look up to who has gone through this a breast cancer survivor who has made it i had none so i i decided that you know there is no it's there is absolutely no point in hiding mm. what is at stake you know what is at stake it probably my image changes and you know oh my god i might not be looked at as a glamorous actress or whatever 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 it did go through me in my mind but then i had this discussion i had it with my father mm. and um, dad was like you know whatever suits you you want to go ahead make the uh, you know make the proper make the proper noise so that you know the right people hear you and and for me i know we are we are tiny speck in this universe so we can't make that kind of a effort alone but the kind of support i received okay the kind of love that i i didn't know i could get that much love my inboxes my uh, instagram and facebook and everything was full of it full of um, sorry <laughs> you're such a brave lady <laughs> the great smile yeah yeah abhi papa kya bol rahe hain abhi oh he's doing good he is is fine he is super proud of me <laughs> even me too really all of women has to be proud about of you really see we are women mm. we are all strong true we just don't know it till we have to face something i saw one video on uh, your insta hi hair <laughs> <laughs> actually yeah. kitna time laga tha aapko hair fir se aane ke oh my god when you you know when you lose so i had um, 
I, you know, I have had a huge modeling career as well, apart from my acting career. I know. So I have endorsed every single hair product probably at that time. Okay, and uh, I still get a lot of hair commercials being offered. And um, so hair has been a very big aspect of my, you know, the physical aspect and the looks and the glam and all of that. Um, but I don't know. I was, I. I just didn't have that um, space or say the, um, what do you say, the any kind of uh, space for fear. Okay, so I was not scared to lose my hair. I had reached a level in the treatment where I was like, okay. You have accepted it totally. I have, yes, I like, yes, I got this, what I have to do it's now. It's hair. Yeah. I mean, it's okay, it's going to grow back. Yes. Okay, and... I, I'll I'll be bald, okay, but I think I'll I'll still be fine, and I'm not going to sit and hide. I'm going to show that side of me, because that's what we do. We are real people. Real things happen to us. कैसा आपने खुद निकाल नहीं तो doctors वाले ने निकाला actually hair कैसा हुआ है? No, so your hair starts falling out after two, two to three kilos. In generally, I saw so many patients actually. I went to one cancer hospital also. See, there they start the before the chemo, they'll remove all their hair actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah some people do that. Yes. So, see, um, the chemotherapy that I went through is four uh, medications and 12. Okay. So, the four are epiribicin mm -hmm. and the 12 are paclitaxel. Mm -hmm. What happens in the epiribicin phase is that that four first four cycles of chemotherapy mm. are brutal on you, are like really brutal, okay? And the, f the minute you have one medication, one uh, session of chemotherapy done, you don't feel like yourself at all. There is no okay? energy? It saps you of energy, it saps you of, uh, you know, your basic concentration, your focus, everything, okay? And um, your Though you're an actress, yeah. <laughs> On screen? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. It is not a small thing here, really. Yeah. So, I started losing my hair on the second, uh, this thing. But before that, before my chemotherapy, I went and did a very short haircut. I did like a super short haircut. And um, I, um, I was, I was like, okay, but my hairdressers, they cried and they were in the salon and they were like, you know, and my hair was this long. And they could just not cut my hair. And I was like, guys, I have to do this. My, my chemotherapy is tomorrow and you have to cut my hair. And, you know, she, she she's a very famous stylist and she cut my hair and she was crying and she was cutting. But I did not cry, okay? Not a single tear because I had promised myself that I'm going to not show any kind of... Um, because I don't want sympathy and pity, okay? And, and that time you just don't have that... Um, you, you don't have it in you. You don't want that sympathy uh, from people. So I, I was like, I'm not, see, I'm not crying. Why are you crying? You know, and they were all in the salon crying. And I was like, we're not going to charge you anything for this. <laughs> so, so, so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Which you don't want. Yeah, and like, we want you to come back with your, you know, yeah. Of your course, I have hair, yeah, and yeah. very nice know, hair you have. Yeah, right get now. the next next hairstyle done, and I'm like, I'll, I'll I'll be coming. Don't worry. And so yeah, but it is um, the first time when the hair falls off, and you look at yourself. It's a scary moment, okay. And it's not just the hair; it's your eyebrows, your eyelashes, your nails. Everything takes a hit. But you know, I looked at myself in the mirror, and I was like. I only see strength, okay? I see beauty and I see strength. And I'm going out in the world like this. I used to go out during my chemotherapy, though I'm not supposed to, and my doctors, I hope they're not listening because I was not allowed to leave. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you know, because your, your um, immunity is very, very low and you cannot fall sick. The hygiene levels have to be taken care of, who you meet, what you eat, everything has to be looked into. There is a huge aspect to it. Your, your what about your WBC, WBC count, your white blood cells okay. go down a lot. That is when you can catch any mm. infection. infections very easily. Yeah. So what about the diet part actually? So the diet part, I was very, very 
strict but in a way where i enjoyed my meals because i'm a foodie you know i love my food and i had home cooked basic khana but very tasty food you cannot have anything spicy because you have cotton mouth mm. there is this thing called a cotton mouth in chemotherapy which happens where yeah. you get a lot of ulcers you cannot talk you cannot eat and oh my god <laughs> it's difficult okay it's difficult it's very very difficult to uh, i there were days when i was not able to drink water yeah okay it was that tough but i had decided and i had uh, you won't believe it anjali everybody you must have heard that in chemotherapy everybody has nausea and you throw up and yeah, I, I, i did I, not i heard that it, it it is so painful but i'll tell you huh. i took care and i learned and understood and read so much about it in the in, and and i had discussions with my surgeons and doctors to understand okay because that is the effort i put in okay from my side to understand i took care of it i did not have a single nausea a single vomit or a nausea in my even even nausea i did not have in my 16 cycles of which went on for a year okay um that is to do with few changes that i did okay number one i kept myself very active even on the days when i was not able to get up from the bed like i was not unable to push myself out of the bed i pushed myself out and i used to do yoga i used to put on music on blast just because of your mentally very strong that is why you came up it's very not easy because i'm mentally very strong it's because i i had i had made up my mind i had decided that i will do the right kind of things for if i am going to take this medication this medication better enter my body and do the right things okay so the medication has to do its job and for which i will do what it needs to be done okay so my doctors had told me to be very active my doctors had told me you exercise you be you you know see to it that your blood circulation is very high mm. so that the medication works very well okay when chemotherapy what happens is in, in most cases with patients and also because i was already very fit yes. i have been fit i have had a really good lifestyle okay i take care of i'm i'm not a smoker i don't drink alcohol i i'm not somebody who indulges in junk food or sugar i have had a very um so you know nice good time. even though i indulge in food because i overall like yeah food. prawns biryani yeah. chaala baaga chestaru <laughs> <laughs> i saw yeah. that video prawns yes. biryani <laughs> in the lockdown yeah, I, i did all those videos yeah so yes food is a very big part of it but um, even then this happened to me okay for a fittest person at 36 years old who who was dancing for 70 72 hours non stop shooting in front of, this happened to me okay so cancer can happen to anybody at any time okay and all i want to say is we we humans we we take this life so seriously okay it's not even funny you it it can everything can shift in like a, you know a jiffy it, it everything can change so just don't take life so seriously is it yeah <laughs> yeah live live fully what you very have important. learned in this journey actually that's what that's that's exactly what i was coming to i mean if there is a lesson that i have learned in this journey is that life throws mm. all sorts of things at you okay you have your happy ecstasy moments where you have like this uh, where you have success and you have achievements of sorts and you have um support and friends and love and everything okay but you will also have your sorrows and your lows and you need to learn to enjoy them you need to learn to accept it that it is going to be like this it's not going to be like this and life has this um you know this universe has these uh, mul- multitude of emotions which is thrown at you so just accept it and live it fully 
and give it your hundred percent. Now we are ready to uh, do the movies right now. Yes, I'm one hundred percent ready. Everyone is ready. We are 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 ready. Vamsi Garu. So it was Ilira Jakaru and Vamsi Garu because yeah. of the first film. So Hamsanandani is the name of a classical raga, right? So, yeah. Okay. Right. And at that time, I didn't care whatever name they wanted to give me. Okay, I was like, <laughs> no, I was like, I thought I was only going to do one film. <laughs> only one film. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's. A, I was an eighteen-year-old. Okay. I was like looking at ex, like learning new things and. You know, making some pocket money, okay? And I, I didn't know what, this came so naturally to. So after that, uh, you did Attar Inti Daredi with Pawan Kalyan Garu. After that, I did many films. Yeah, many films. Atar, the Milchi was one of the big hit, and then Attar Inti Daredi Legend, Lockyam. Yeah, I know. You did so many movies, but what I mean to say is, Pawan Kalyan Garu is a film uh, uh, hero as well as. Is a politician also? So you have also. to ask me a, a <laughs> yeah, hero-centric yeah, question. <laughs> How was it working with Pavan, Pavan Kalyan? I, yeah. Can there be one interview where I'm not answering that? Like at I least know. one. I, I thought Anjali, I would. This would be the interview, but no. That's it. Okay, no. So what do you want me to say? It was that amazing. Song that song. Okay, that song really. is amazing, mm. and I still start grooving to it whenever. Kuch yaad hai? Second line. Kuch yaad hai aapko song? It's time to. Oh, dear, oh, dear, in the car. <laughs> it's time to party now. Rave o pilla. Oh, what a party it was shooting for it. Yeah, yeah. It was all night shoot because I was traveling from America mm. at that time. Yeah, and uh, it was a night shoot, and I remember I was completely jet lagged. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and um, I just knew that it is Pavan Kalyan, and I was like, okay, Pavan sir, let's do it. I was dancing for yeah, but what a what a beautiful song. Actually, I thought uh, only one surgery or two surgeries. Um, uh, who I am? I was about three surgeries actually. Three surgeries. Yeah, I had three surgeries. So, कुछ spread हुआ है क्या कहीं? There is no spread. Mm. Um, see, the thing is that the tumor I felt in the very first like moment, and it was taken out immediately. Okay. But I tested positive for BRCA1, which is hereditary breast cancer. Right. Okay, so uh, which means that there are chances there could be a reoccurrence of another cancer or maybe the same cancer. But to mitigate the risk, to completely you know take care of it, you have to go in through some really extensive prophylactic surgeries. Okay. Um, which are very very severe and which i did go through mm. and uh, supposedly my chances of another cancer or anything has dropped down entirely so i took care of it in like i went with all guns blazing it was a war yeah okay i i knew this was going to be a war it's not going to be easy and i went like you know if this disease had a face Okay, if cancer had a face, I have looked at it in its eyes. Mm. Okay, and I have, I have looked at it in its eyes, and I have said, like, I am not going to cry. I'm not going to show any kind of fear, and you can't break me. Your skin and your hair and your confidence and your energy levels and your fitness, as it is, actually, there is no difference between and after, right? Um, Before yeah. and after. Yes, but you know, um, for this, I, what I would, you did actually. I get this question a lot. Okay, a lot of cancer patients have been. In fact, just yesterday we were at an event, and I was uh, getting asked by 
a lot of women who were fighting this disease that how do you even look like this after your, the kind of treatment you know people don't believe it that I've had this kind of treatment and um, I mean they tell me that oh your hair is hair looks so perfect your skin looks so good your you know your if you look very fit and your energy levels you're able to travel we are not able to you know do normal things in the day I you have to understand that I was already very fit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes. that has helped me. Yes. Okay, if if I had a very poor lifestyle, then the hit that my body and mind both would have taken with this kind of a, this sort of a treatment that I have gone through a brutal treatment, um, I wouldn't have been like this. Yes. You are okay. more fit now. I I I don't know whether I'm more fit, but I just I just have the ability to push myself and uh, you know I feel like I need to now be there for people who are watching me you know people who are going through this treatment and are watching me because I get actually so many messages day in day out so many asking me for what needs to be done where should we go what should we do my mother had cancer what am I supposed there is nothing there is nothing in India which okay I have to tell you one thing that India has the best oncology medical side of treatment okay absolutely no complaints I am sitting here I'm telling you I've gone through my chemotherapies I had the in option Hyderabad in Mumbai no, in Mumbai okay I did my treatment in Mumbai okay but I know Hyderabad and Mumbai yeah. has the best oncology facility okay in India I would say we have the best surgeons we have the best radiologists we have the best medical oncologists okay what we don't have is rehabilitation and diagnostics okay we need India needs diagnostic centers which are individual cancer specific diagnostic centers which are not owned by some hospital or just you know like a like a part of a hospital we need specific cancer specific diagnostic centers okay what we need is we need rehabilitationals like a like a onco counseling rehab kind of a thing because when you're done with the treatment nobody tells you what you have to because you're going like look at me i i'm looking normal right yes absolutely yeah absolutely. so now i'm a, i'm put out in this world to do normal things mm. but am i Generally, no i have gone that. i've just come from a war ah. i've come from a battle you know i feel like a soldier who is who is you know just had a big war and who has you know I have scars and I have a very different body and now everything has changed for me I might not show it but yes everything has changed for me so I'm coming out and I'm going out there but there is no guidance of a sort right your your mental health takes a hit your physical health takes a hit you just don't know how to get back so the these kind of things okay like the jargon that is used by doctors our common man does not understand true you know even the well educated ones when they go they hear the word cancer they have the brain is shut right they're not going to understand what is biopsy what is chemo what where to get biopsy what to, what to do nobody tells you that in india okay and it will be really really sad if we expect doctors to do that because our doctors just don't have the time there are just way too many cancer patients out there way too many cancer uh, diagnoses happening out there in india uh, our, our surgeons and doctors don't have the time for that and we cannot expect it from them. It's something that right now we have to do it for ourselves is to educate ourselves in the right way. If we are dealing with a disease like that, to educate it the right, to ask them the right questions. And what is missing in India is this, is an oncology counseling of a sort. That is the reason I have started my foundation. Okay. Can you tell us what is the, your foundation name and details and all? So I have just launched my, um, so I have been working on all of this, like I told you, during my treatment. And I've just launched my foundation. It's uh, in name the memory it. of my mother. Oh. It's Yamini Cancer Foundation. Okay. And um, it's very, very close to my heart. And I have made it my life's purpose to, um, you know, to, to kind of create this awareness. Mm which wasn't there for me okay and is not there for so many other women out yes. there right so i want to create this awareness 
and I I am I didn't know at that time I didn't know that this was going to take up so much of my time and energy mm. but it is and now I've realized that you know if I am sitting here in front of you fully alive this is the reason you know this is the reason and I don't want to hide my dis my illness and I don't want to hide what I've gone through because what am I going to achieve by doing that and that is the reason I've launched this foundation I want to go out I want to do this I I don't know if I can make some major changes or you know make some sort of a uh, noise but I know even if I am able to save one life or if I even if I'm able to make a difference to just the women watching or even if I'm able to um, you know give them a helpline number yes. like you know I felt a lump what do I do mm. okay rather than googling and having this confused information you know one one reputable website or a reputable contact like a helpline number where I want to do that that's really great man that's really great actually ye problem ke liye aapko insurance tha pehle aapka health insurance tha oh my god the one of the lessons that i've learned in this insurance is very very important i had my insurance yes okay okay this disease can get very expensive this treatment can get very expensive um mm. uh, medical insurance is a must is a must okay and we are not it's we are india it's not america okay america tells you what comes from west is that you know you need to get your mammograms and your checkups done after 40 yes you need to get the but see that country runs entirely on in, yes. insurance yes 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 okay yes. india doesn't if i go and tell this to my uh, um my cook at home mm. she's going to be like what do you self breast exam <laughs> kya karna hai didi you know so it's not possible it's for us we have to have the awareness we have to start talking and discussing and foundations like you know yesterday i was uh, attending an event in hyderabad for um, cancer care hospital you were there too so you know that and foundations like yamini and ashwins and you know so many other foundation we need to do this okay this is what is needed to be done and that awareness factor needs to be there this has to be a conversation which is happening in schools and ground level okay like literally the outreach programs have need to be done you know and it's not a it's now there is no difference between a urban disease and a rural disease yeah. it's happening everywhere villages have equal amount of cases you know there is a lot of cervical cancer cases in the villages now and the breast cancer is a more urban thing so it's cancers everywhere we need to have to have this dialogue which is a uh, need to take out the taboo out of it and just have a basic conversation over a women's health if any uh, anybody wants to take your advice or something if they need any support mental support or moral support or something like that yeah. so how can they'll contact you they can reach me through my foundation okay any contact number mail id can you provide to of course yeah i will i will be able to provide you with that i will be able to provide you also my instagram facebook you can reach out to me um follow me i have my foundation id is coming up soon so you know any of that you can reach out yes ye journey mein kabhi bhagwan ke paas gaya bhagwan mujhe bacha lo kabhi so okay conversation with god yeah. is like <laughs> it's a big subject <laughs> it's a it's a very controversial yeah. subject if you listen to the conversations i have with god oh my god i have never since i lost my mom okay i have not had a bhagwan mujhe bachao conversation okay okay never. Okay. okay for her i did all of that and yeah i mean i have my own thing going with god okay acha okay so i demand mm <laughs> you demand i demand <laughs> there is no bhagwan mujhe batao main koi nahi 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 i'm telling you do this i don't deserve this get these are the converse that's why i'm saying it's a controversial topic if yeah. i have to start talking about what i speak with my god so i demand what i want and i demand what i don't want <laughs> <laughs> there is no word to say <laughs> <laughs> yes so god has um, 
uh, there is place for prayers and I don't know how your prayers sound like, my prayers sound like <laughs> that. Get it done right now. What? <laughs> On demand. Yeah. On demand. <laughs> yeah. Just take care of it right now. <laughs> Even Mamta Mohan Das Garu is a survivor also. Oh, is it? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Ma uh, Mamta Mohan Das. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Did she go through chemotherapy? Yeah. Hmm. Just uh, recently she came out actually in that situation. Hmm. But I asked the interview about this month, cancer month, October month. So she said that when I come to Hyderabad, definitely, Anjali, I want to speak on it. Hmm. Definitely. So people doesn't know about this. So definitely let us do. We learn it. Respond here, Tanakura. Actually, I think you forgot it. Two years back, um, because of one photo shoot for Mugdha photo shoot, uh, I have uh, contact Contacted with you. Me. Yeah. Oh, okay, 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 <laughs> now you got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. Uh, just see the previous uh, conversation. I yeah. I have sent some photographs. I see the time photos are passed and Then you told me I am in this. Uh, Treatment, oh, okay. so I cannot come to Hyderabad right now. Mm -hmm. I'll do the photo shoot for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What about the marriage? What is your marriage? See, love for me plays a very important role. Okay, and um, I don't really, I mean, I don't know whether I believe in marriages, and I don't want to sound like a rebel. A rebellious person like I don't believe in marriages but I actually don't believe in marriages I believe in love I believe in companionship I believe in um, you know two families coming together and this extended all family. the differences that we have yeah you know just come together these two strange families and take a life forward and live together so for me, it's very simple. I keep it that way. And... Do you get Very subtle, you're coming to that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, love is love plays a huge role in Ham Sanandini's life is all I can tell you right now. If there are any survivors, ladies, all of them, what do you want to say to that people? What do I want to say? I'm nobody to say anything to them. They're all doing fabulously. I know that. Mm. Okay. Because you, you have gone through all the yes, situations. So can you can give the better uh, opinion on it. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But what happens a lot of women come to me and I, like I said, they ask me how I'm looking like this and how I'm, you know, looking so fit and, you know, my skin and my hair. But I want to tell you that I don't want to misguide them. Mm. And make it look like it's easy. It's not easy. Okay. It's not easy. It is very, 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 very tough. Okay. You might not feel like yourself. And it's going to be, it's going to change your life drastically. It, your life is never going to be the same. Okay. After this disease. And that is the honest truth. And I want everyone fighting it or just being diagnosed or whatever to know that. But... How you look at it, how you deal with it is something that's completely in your power. Okay, you have the power to deal with it the way you want to. So, go with a headstrong mindset and get the right information, educate yourself. Okay, when you go to your doctors, do your prior study because oncology is not easy. Okay, your doctors don't have the time. So do the kind of study that needs to be done. Talk to survivors, talk to people. I know there are women wanting to help out too. So get in touch with them. Um, you know, find out, get in touch with uh, foundations like ours, where you can get all this information, which a medical or a hospital or a facility cannot provide. It cannot. Okay, because there are so many myths around, okay, that, oh, you need to get your test done after 40, you need to do this and all. I was diagnosed at 35, okay, and I have gone through this treatment and there are younger girls, they're teenagers going through it. So obviously this disease does not happen to only after 40 kind of situation, okay. Yes, you have a dense breast prior to 40 because of which you can't do mammograms. Yes. Okay, the mammogram will not catch it. So you can do sonography. There are other things, 
that can be done so you know we live in a world where we have we feel like you know everything is um nothing's going to happen to me yes. we live in that kind of a, so don't live in a delusional world this can happen to anybody be fit take care of your lifestyle your lifestyle will take a toll on you if you smoke if you drink it is going to hamper your health okay it is okay we are women we have a reproductive system going in our body and we have thousands of hormones yes <laughs> playing their role okay <laughs> so don't mess things up with them listen to your body mm. and do the right kind of things take care of yourself i see girls who are fit and fine and just abusing themselves with toxicity of sorts okay it's all going to show on you one day and it's going to hamper your health and your quality of life will deteriorate and you don't want that so just i mean take it easy but don't abuse yourself in that sense so take care of yourself be fit be aware read up and go and test yourself what about your friends who has supported to you actually okay Can you tell us about <laughs> <laughs> so you say, are you asking me industry specific you ask anything me? anything so i have had wonderful as i have a very close knit uh, friend circle i don't have like a massive friend circle in okay. in, in the industry no. in the industry as well and outside as well so my school and college friends are very very close to me i have a small little friend circle okay and in the industry i have few i would i wouldn't say like close friends but i have well wishers and i have um colleagues and you know some people who care is what i'll say i have had some amazing um people from the industry some heroes and some actresses and directors pick up the phone and call me and say you know what this happened to me oh yeah i have had such people from our industry call me and say but they have not come out and they were like i don't know hamsa how you can you know you're out there you're putting yourself out there and i would not have been able to do this i can't talk about it i cannot and i it's okay i understand but for me it's difficult to hide i don't want to be hiding and wearing wigs and trying to look like no i am a human this can happen to me this can happen to you it can happen to anybody you know so i want to be out there and i had good support coming from them i had you know so you know it's a funny thing um when i went for my hair cut one day prior to my chemotherapy okay where my this long cascade of hair was going to go this short into like a you know boy cut um i had uh, lavanya okay uh, who was washing her hair next to me okay okay and she looked at me and we worked in sogadi chini naina together so we know each other you know and uh, so we had a nice conversation and all of that and i was going through like crazy things in my mind right because tomorrow my chemo was going to start and i was just i didn't tell her anything and i was normal and within like few months she read in the paper oh and she called and she messaged and she was like Hamza it's not even funny how somebody can be going through something like this and still you know be so casual and normal and chirpy in a salon that i met you you had come to cut your hair and now i know that and um, i was like yeah but what do i say i mean can't really say anything now you're absolutely normal actually koi bhi aane do koi bhi pehchan nahi kar sakte kuch bhi nothing <laughs> <laughs> you are you are more beautiful and you have the great hair and your your skin is also very healthy you are looking so beautiful really sari mere liye thank you so much for your coming such a great conversation with you so uh i put me flight undi ga but i don't yeah. want to yeah. waste your time now yeah. you have a journey also one hour journey darling thank love you, so you love you ilani healthy ga undali ilage andanga undali ipudu telugu lo maatladutunnanu telugu lo oka dialogue cheptare emunna um dialogue <laughs> <laughs> any single line is okay with me nenu 
మిమ్మల్ని చూసి చాలా హ్యాపీగా ఫీల్ అవుతున్నాను ఓ మై గాడ్ చాలా చాలా సంతోషంగా ఫీల్ అవుతున్నాను థ్యాంక్ యూ డాలింగ్ థ్యాంక్ యూ సో మచ్ థ్యాంక్ యూ సో మచ్ ఎప్పటికీ మీరు ఇలాగే ఆయుర ఆరోగ్య ఐశ్వర్యాలతో ఉండాలని సిగ్నేచర్ స్టూడియోస్ నుంచి మనస్ఫూర్తిగా మీరు భగవంతుని అడుగుతున్నారు నేను ప్రే చేస్తున్నాను ఇలాగే ఉండాలి మీరు ఆరోగ్యంగా ఉండాలి ప్రేన్ మై మై స్టైల్ ఎస్ డిమాండ్ i do that yeah <laughs> hamsa has to be yeah. <laughs> my legs hamsa has to be healthy like this man thank yes. you darling thank you so much you have a great it journey it was a pleasure talking to you anjali and i'm so glad that there are journalists like you in the telugu industry making a difference um i really had a good time so sweet of you really